This week's Democratic convention has trained a bright spotlight on the, the so-called racial reckoning that's happening around the country, even the world in some places. An epicenter of the unrest has been Richmond, Virginia, the former capital of the Confederacy and the site of some of the most prominent Confederate statues in the country. Tonight, we're joined by Richmond's mayor, LeVar Marcus Stoney, the youngest mayor in that city's history. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, Mayor. Thank you, Lindsay. So in a bold and, and rather controversial move this summer, you used emergency powers to order the removal of Confederate statues on city land, specifically those that line the historic Monument Avenue. You're now facing legal challenges as a result of that. Why did you feel so strongly this needed to be done? Well, I felt so strongly because uh, I believe earlier in June, uh, there was a, a young man who was trying to bring down a, a monument in uh, the city of Portsmouth, Virginia. And while bringing, trying to bring down that monument, uh, the monument fell on him. And he, the guy I hear flatline at least three times at the hospital. And so uh, I did not want that to happen uh, in my own city where our, our monuments are, are huge. They're the biggest, I think, in the country. And this area on Monument Avenue was the center of a lot of the unrest. Uh, there was a number of calls, over 100 plus calls for service in that one area. And so I thought it needed to be removed right away. And so on July 1, uh, I removed those monuments, uh, uh, evoking my emergency powers as the emergency management director of my city during a state of emergency. And, and let's go back to June when protesters in your city tied ropes around an eight-foot Jefferson Davis statue to pull it down. You were concerned again about everybody's safety, but do you consider these people to be criminals? Um, uh, we obviously do not support unlawful behavior in the city of Richmond. Uh, that is, uh, we're against that. And uh, at the time, removing a monument uh, before July 1 uh, was considered a felonious offense. And um, although I agree that those symbols are racist, uh, they symbolize hate, they, they symbolize um, you know, division, uh, I believe the right way to do that is for the government to, to, to take a stand and remove them, them our, ourselves, and that's exactly what we did. You're, of course, facing a tough reelection battle at this time. Do you think that your move to remove Confederate monuments will help or hurt your chances? And do you feel supported by today's Democratic Party? Oh, yes, I do feel supported by uh, our Democratic Party. And, and I will say, you know, when I remove those monuments, the thought of politics uh, never crossed my mind. The thought that I had was the thought about my grandmother, who was a domestic laborer herself, who worked in people's homes, uh, and hearing stories from people who have lived in the city for a very long time. They said that, you know what, when they were, uh, when they were little kids, their grandmothers work on Monument Avenue uh, as the part of the help. Uh, and what would they think? What would my grandmother think? My grandmother would think that the right thing to do was to remove those symbols of hate, and that's exactly what we did. And I'm thankful now for the city council who agreed with it, and now they are permanently removed. Now, you've been through three different police chiefs so far, and your city has certainly seen its share of unrest these past few months. Is defunding the police an answer, and how do you maintain public order while making seismic changes like removing century-old monuments? I think reimagining and reforming the police department is is the direction uh, that we should move into. Um, you know, I, I just believe that we should fund the change we want to see in our police department. We should fund the reforms. Uh, I don't believe that uh, we need someone who's armed to show up at every nonviolent call that goes into our 911 center. And so we're working to create a, a Marcus alert, which we call a Marcus alert, which is a crisis alert for those who might be experiencing a mental or behavioral health issue. Uh, and our officers need more training. Uh, they need more training. You have to fund that. So I'm, I'm committed to funding the change, funding the reforms we want to see in our police department. Tonight is, of course, the last night of the Democratic National Convention. You've been a party insider now for quite some time. Is there anything that you'd like to hear tonight that hasn't been said or hasn't been given enough attention? You know, I've heard a lot over the last couple of days, and it has been an amazing, um, amazing convention. We have truly adapted to uh, this new normal because of the pandemic. Uh, I think President Obama made the case on why everyone should go out to vote and why Donald Trump is an existential threat to this country. Uh, moving forward, though, I think that tonight, uh, 
Vice President Biden can make the case on why he's the individual who can bring this country together. We are at our most vulnerable uh, stage uh, in our country's uh, history, I believe, uh, at least in my lifetime. And we need someone who's actually going to be a uniter, not a divider, not someone who's going to depend on the playbook that President Trump has been depending on for the last three and three quarter years. And that's a, a playbook of division. Mayor Stoney, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate having you on. Thank you, Lindsay. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.